Thank you. Uh, good evening. Are you looking forward to the Olympic Games in the Paris this summer? Who's looking forward? Great, all of you. I'm as well. It's, it's, it's fun to watch the best athletes in the world competing at the highest level, uh, trying to achieve the most prestigious uh, uh, reward in the world of sports, an Olympic medal. And I wonder if you know how many athletes compete at the Olympic Games in Paris this summer. Any idea? More than 10,000. To be precise, 10,500 athletes in Paris competing for the, uh, the medals. Do you have any idea how, um, how many athletes afterwards, after the Games, return home with a gold medal around their neck, in their pocket or in a suitcase? How many? Somewhat more than 300. So 300 gold medals, somewhat more, uh, and more than 10,000 competitors. So statistically, the chance on a gold medal for each individual athlete is around 3%. And for such a gold medal, they have to compete with the best athletes at this moment. All these athletes who are in Paris, they qualified for the Olympic Games. So they had in the two years before qualify at uh, qualification tournaments. They had an, a top ranking in world championships, at European championships. So they are already the best of the best. And the very best are in Paris. So to win a gold medal, you would assume that you really need perfection to win, finally, a gold medal. So I want to know from you if you, what, what your thoughts about this? Do you think that perfection is needed to achieve a gold medal? If, if you agree, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, many, many of you believe that perfection is needed, and I, I understand, because of the, the tough competition, that you really need the perfect race, the perfect uh, swim, etc. But let's, uh, let's ask, I need to remote, Let's ask uh, Irene Wüst. Um, Irene Wüst, <coughs> most of you know her. Uh, Irene Wüst is the most decorated Olympian uh, skater ever. And what sets her apart from other Olympic heroes like Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt is that she, she's the only athlete who won at five, five consecutive Olympic Games, at least one gold medal. And she won more, uh, more uh, gold medals uh, across that period of 20 years, uh, many silver and bronze as well. And in between, she's also a serial world champion, uh, serial European champion, national champion, so she won everything multiple times. So she's really one of the greatest athletes uh, ever. And what did she say? after her final race in Beijing, 22, where she uh, clinched the gold medal on the 1500 meters. She said, the perfect race, I've, I've not yet skated the perfect race. What? Such a champion have never performed a perfect race. And by chance, I, uh, I met her a couple of weeks ago, so I asked her, Irene, I've read this in the interview, uh, uh, never, uh, never have skated the perfect race. Is, is that true? Yeah, that's definitely true. Even more so, I don't believe in the perfect race. I don't believe that perfection exists. And, uh, okay, okay. And so I wondered, is, is, this, is this an exception? Is, is she unique in this, this opinion? Or uh, uh, is she a kind of diva that wants to have some attention for a ridiculous uh, statement? Or she might be true. And if you carefully uh, uh, listen to, to champions who become world champion, European champion, Olympic champion, and when, when uh, they are obviously very happy with their win, but if you ask them, almost always 
each champion can point out some minor mistakes, a, a little adaptation, an unbalance. Uh, always something happens, uh, always a minor mistake uh, happened. So maybe perfection doesn't exist and uh, it's actually an unattainable goal. And if we look at some research on this, uh, uh, this topic, then uh, researchers found when they uh, studied, uh, for example, bas basketball players, uh, free throws, uh, under high pressure conditions versus low pressure conditions in the same matches uh, at the end, uh, the last 10 seconds or so, that's, uh, uh, that's a high pressure uh, situation relative to somewhere in the middle of, of a game or unimportant games. And what you see is that, uh, that basketball players, also the legends in the game, like Michael Jordan, they underachieved at the high pressure moments. So they performed worse relative to themselves in low pressure situations. And the same findings are in other sports like baseball, uh, baseball hitters, they, they underperform in important games, important high pressure situations versus low pressure situations. So actually, uh, the perf perfection is unattainable. And why is that, that important to know? Particularly for young, uh, young athletes, but also young performers in any domain. Yeah, we're talking about sports, but it, it, you can generalize it to, to other achievement domains as well, including education, uh, work, uh, business, art, culture, uh, politics, uh, in any situation in which you have to perform under pressure that uh, in, in, in these situations there are always so-called performance losses. So you work very hard to uh, achieve a particular level. Uh, uh, Olympians uh, are, are currently working very hard to get uh, in, in the best shape they can be uh, at the end of July when the Olympics uh, start. Uh, but they will never achieve that, that particular level. There will always be performance losses. So the winners are the athletes with uh, the, uh, the less performance losses. That's at least what the data suggests and also what Olympians, uh, Olympians say. And an, a nice example with a perfect quote in this regard is Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson is an uh, Olympic champion as well at the hurdles, uh, one, uh, 110 uh, hurdles uh, race. In 1996, in Atlanta, he became uh, Olympic champion. And what he said, it's not, not about perfection. It's about overcoming your mistakes during the race and keep your composure. That's very important. So when you, when you are performing in a final, an important final, and something goes wrong, what's inevitable, uh, you always have some performance losses. How do you keep your composure? Because you don't want to make any mistakes. You want to you, you want to 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 to, to, uh, uh, to race to, to to perform the perfect race. That that's that's what you want. And that's okay. That that's uh, that's a desire uh, when it comes from the inside, from yourself, striving for perfection. That's fine. But it's not the only thing. So uh, it, it, it's nice because it's motivating, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fueling your, your, your determination. But next to that, you have to anticipate on possible mistakes and know how to, re how to react. How do you respond to mistakes and keep your composure? That's very important and that's the core of sports psychology. It's my business, sport and performance psychology, and we are uh, uh, examining, studying, uh, consulting athletes, uh, performers in any domain, how to deal with high pressure and keep your performance losses as low as possible. Now, there's one general uh, principle, an overarching principle of all the mental skills you can, uh, you can distinguish and, uh, and discuss. And I, I, I cannot discuss all these mental skills. I have only a couple of minutes here, of course. Uh, many books are about it and articles and papers, uh, etc. But overall, the overarching principle is control the controllables. And that's a very old saying uh, already from the uh, Greek uh, ancient uh, philosophers. Uh, it's the uh, Stoicism. 
and also contemporary uh, stoic philosophers like Ryan Holiday uh, watches videos on the internet, great videos. He also emphasizes control the controllables. You cannot control if it's warm, if it's cold, uh, if it's raining, if it's snowing or other weather conditions. You don't control what your teammates do. You don't control what your coach, uh, coach uh, says about you. You don't control what your opponents do. You don't control the, the decisions of the referee. You don't control what people say about you on, the, on, the, uh, in, on social media. What you control is how you play, the task at hand. What you have to do now to achieve your desired outcome, a medal, a championship, or whatever. So that's, uh, that's an important uh, first uh, principle. Focus on, uh, on, on, the, on the way, the pathway towards your desired outcome, to, uh, your goal. So you don't control winning or losing because there are other opponents or there are opponents that also want to win. Uh, but do the task itself as good as possible and then wait and see what the final outcome will be. That's the first uh, uh, principle. The second one, is a so-called pre-mortem analysis. Okay, pre-mortem analysis, what's that? Now, that's similar as a post-mortem analysis. Post-mortem post analysis that's developed in, in business. Uh, at, at Harvard, Harvard Business Review uh, was the first uh, journal that published about it. Um, in business, uh, things go wrong. Projects are a disaster. Uh, in medical hospitals, sometimes a patient uh, dies. Uh, in sports, f f finals uh, uh, are going to lose when you are the favorite. So things happen that you don't want, and that can be a disaster. And afterwards, when it, ha when it has happened, you think about what are the reasons? Why did it happen? And you try to analyze this and uh, uh, causes, uh, etc., with with the aim of finding out what it cost and how you can prevent it in the future, that it doesn't happen again. That's a post-mortem analysis. A pre-mortem analysis is that you think about a future event that not has, happened, uh, not has yet happened, it's going to happen in the future. For example, an Olympic team, I work with uh, the, uh, the Holland Eight, uh, big guys, uh, the best rowers in the world, favorite for, uh, for world championships, Olympic championships. And uh, a couple of years before the Olympic Games, we asked the questions, why are you going to lose the Olympic final? What are the reasons why you lose the Olympic final that takes place in about two years? Now, they generated all kinds of reasons, individually, in small groups, and, and, and later the team as a whole. And you got a list of potential pitfalls, potential causes of, of, of loss, uh, losing the final. And then they had to rate each of these causes, which factors do you control and which factors are beyond your control. The factors you can control, you can work on for the coming two years before the final. So that's an important thing before pre, uh, a pre-mortem analysis has to, has to be done uh, far before the event itself so that you have the time uh, to repair and to pre prepare and to, uh, and to strengthen the identified uh, weaknesses and deficiencies. The same you can do, of course, with the perfect game, that you think, okay, what, what's our perfect race? What do we have to do? Wh which factors can we control and which factors are beyond our control? And also, from that perspective, focus on the factors you can control. And accept, accept the things you cannot control that are beyond your control. That's the other side of control the controllables. And try to uh, think about what you do if things happen which you don't control. And you can, uh, uh, you can work and, and, and think and imagine and visualize your potential reaction in such a way that it's constructive and that you keep your eye on the ball, so to say, that you keep uh, your focus on the task at hand. And that's related to, an, uh, to a third uh, mental skill, uh, what I want to highlight here, that's uh, so-called thought control. For example, a tennis player misses an easy shot. And the reaction is, 
disgust, aggression, uh, uh, highly upset, uh, throwing with a record, uh, etc. Why do, uh, do that tennis player respond in, in, in such a way? Is that because he or she misses uh, that easy ball? No, it's because of the underlying belief. The underlying belief that is, uh, for example, it's horrific when you make a mistake. It's unacceptable that I make a mistake. This cannot be true that I make a mistake. And we have, when you have that underlying belief, of course, your reaction is very extreme as well. If you are more rational, realistic, then you think, okay, mistakes are normal, inevitable. Uh, just accept it when it happens. And of course it's sad and you are disappointed when you make a mistake, but register that idea, okay, it's disappointing, just release what happened and try to refocus on the task at hand so that you compete and that things are not getting worse uh, because of, of, your, of your mistake. So between an, an event and a reaction, there's room uh, to decide for yourself how you respond to particular events. Now, when athletes apply these, uh, 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 these ideas of control the controllables and accept the uncontrollable things that are beyond your control without being a control freak. So do don't try to control things you cannot control because that makes things, uh, things worse. Just try to identify the factors that you can control and focus on these factors. And, uh, and also strive for perfection, uh, but don't expect it. And when you apply these principles, when Olympians for the, uh, for the, for the uh, Paris Olympic Games uh, uh, try to apply these, uh, these principles, then they increase their chances to win their highly desired outcome. And that's, that's a medal, an Olympic medal, and preferably a gold medal. Thank you. Thank you.